so the verses in the Bible are like in a box, a bottomless box, in a sense, sideless and topless, like there's no top and all. But in a sense, they're in a box. They're hidden in there like treasures. And um, we are going to, to go seeking after them. And in the beginning, the Lord will show you a little bit, like he'll open the box a touch, and you can see a peak in it when you're a Christian. Kind of cool. But then uh, as you uh, yield yourself to the Word of God and you dig deeper and deeper, this thing opens up. And then you can see the incredible, incredible redemption known as the gospel, the good news of Jesus. So, <laughs> the depths of this is staggering. Um, so we have, we're kind of skimming across the top and not going deep into it. Um, even if you get a, uh, a top of it, you get something, and then you look at that verse really clearly under a microscope, or you take a magnifying glass and you get a closer look down deep. It's like, you know, there's those books that have those 3D pictures, and in the, in the, you have a picture of some design or something, and it says, okay, that's pretty, that's interesting. But then you keep looking at it, or you pull it back so far, and you see 3D. That's kind of like the, what this is like. This is very cool. Um, so we're in Romans 8. Oh, here we go. I, I, I'm going to pick out the verses, the clinchers, I call it. Like, wow. Or the, it's kind of like you've got this wonderful stuff, and then all of a sudden you see this, this, peak out of the water that just comes up really tall and then comes back down. We're talking about the highlighted scriptures uh, to prove to you infallible proofs that God did far more than just make you righteous by calling you or declaring you righteous, justifying you. It's far further than justification. See, justification is where it starts. God says, you're right with me. In other words, he accepts you. That's remarkable. <laughs> Holy God, accepting a sinner, unholy, ungodly person, just like that because of the blood of Jesus. And he places you in Christ. Now the question is, does God the Father accept Jesus his son? Of course he does. You're in his son, you're accepted. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, you're accepted in the beloved. In the beloved, who's the beloved? Jesus. Remember Jesus, I mean the Father says, this is a son, uh, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. This is a son who I love um, in Matthew 4. You know, it's so cool. Actually, Matthew 3 at the very end. All right, so here it is, this first verse. <laughs> he says, there is therefore, now that therefore is therefore because of the verses before, the chapter before. And basically, this is a, a, another stunning, staggering statement that you have to wrap your mind around as you first read this. If you uh, receive this epistle in the church and you're hearing this stuff and Paul's describing either an unconverted sinner or a Christian who's struggling with sin, like he keeps failing, he keeps failing in Romans 7, which I'm not getting into all that, you know, a lot of study there because it's, we're really talking about the victory the victory verses were kind of focused on those. But if you look at that and, and all of a sudden, remember he says, Oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death. I thank God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, there's therefore now no condemnation. There's therefore now no condemnation because you're serving the law of God with your mind and God delivered you from the corpse of the death and you're free from sin. You know, all that, you know, it's Romans 6, big time. He kind of goes back to that. He says, wait, if you're free from sin, you're justified. There's no condemnation in you. And the cool thing is you're going to see that it isn't just a statement of declaration when you're still lousy. You're living ungodly. You're practicing sin. And God just keeps calling you a, a righteous person, even though you're not living righteously. But it starts with justification, like he justifies you immediately. You're equal with Jesus in the sense of being right with him. You're placed within him. And then there's a process of that justification 
going beyond that. See, the redemption, I think you know this by now, but the, 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 the uh, cross and what he did and the justification and what he did um, is far beyond what he purchased, is far beyond your um, being acquitted. You know, sentence is, is you're at court, you're going to be sentenced to execution and someone is executed for you, so your sentence is no longer um, there. You're declared not guilty. Next case. <laughs> the gavel goes down. You're not guilty. That's justification. That's no condemnation. There's no judgment now. There's no targeting wrath of God or punishment or retribution or vengeance of God at all. You're declared. You're okay. You're free. You're, you're just like you never did it. <laughs> I keep saying that. I repeat a lot, but it's so good, so fresh. So Paul said, there's therefore now, I like, I like the word now. It's particular. It's not like, okay, for those who might think, yeah, I'm a sinner and I'm unrighteous, but you know, later I'm going to be, there's no judgment in that, uh, later. No, he said now. Okay, get out of the courthouse. You, you're no longer court. You've been declared um, guiltless. You go outside the doors and you're breathing fresh air. You're not in a prison. You're not enslaved or anything else. You are totally free. You don't have any debt to pay. <laughs> like I owed a huge debt a, 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 an hour ago. I go to court. I find out someone paid the debt. I go out and there's I'm debt free. <laughs> All right. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I keep saying that, right? It's that in Christ Jesus is a, is a, is a key thing. Was it 150 times it was someone recorded or counted or something? I haven't done it myself. Of in Christ, in him, in whom? You know, in the New Testament? I think so. Something like that. One passage is enough. Like right here, this is enough. Even though there's not 149 other times. There's therefore, <laughs> I'm repeating it again. Once you say it out loud, okay, not just me. There's therefore now no condemna condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, the next part of this verse is not in some of the manuscripts. And by the way, I haven't studied this enough. I don't have time right now to see uh, if this is, if there are better manuscripts. It seems like it's in better manuscripts where the other, this part in the King James is, is eliminated. And you go, well, what is it? You know, doesn't that change the passage? No, it could. But that's why it's important to have the whole Bible, know the whole Bible. He says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you're walking after flesh, in other words, you're living sinfully, excuse me, um, you know, of course there's some judgment against your chastisement and you're condemned in a sense, not eternally. For the Christian, you're not, condemned, you're not eternally condemned. But if I sin, I'm guilty. I can't say, well, no condemnation, no condemnation, no condemnation. I just blew that, no condemnation. I'm guiltless, like I never have any guilt. Yeah, you can be guilty before God, but in, you just confess your sin and then you're forgiven, like it says in 1 John 1, 9. All right, so, but he says here, he goes on and says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Again, there's a lot of translations that don't have that. It is in this King James. I'm not sure how many the uh, how many translations actually have this, but I'm cool with that. You know, as a rule, you're not going to live after the flesh, but after the spirit. By the way, there's a scripture right there that shows, in my opinion, just that second part um, that you uh, can live right before God regularly, and you don't have to keep living under sin like you're act you're acting foolish all the time, and you keep blowing it as a sin, as some sinner. You're a sinner instead of a saint. He says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, the, someone might say, yeah, but you can't really do that. Then why did Paul say that? See, that really bothers me when people say, well, you can't be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. So why did Jesus say do it? Or any of the passages, his commandments. Do you think it's fair that God would give you a command that you can't meet up to and you can't match it, you can't do it? That, okay, I'm going to give you all these commands that I know you're not going to do it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. It's like a father taking a little kid and saying, you're going to do this. You're going to drive that car. You're going to go on the roof and do some roofing for a while or whatever it is. He's not going to give you something you can't do. See, that's a whole nother angle with this. Every commandment, by the way, in my, in my estimation, is given for you to obey properly. It's only right to do it that you can obey and you can do it because Jesus Christ is in you. Every commandment 
can be fulfilled. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. And I believe that could be fulfilling it through you in your life. Um, and that's what he says in verse four coming up here, which we won't go to in this video. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking and the video becomes too long. <laughs> but the point is, is that the commandments of God are there for you to do. And when he says not who walk not after the flesh, it's possible to walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I will say this, uh, all of these kind of tie together, but I'll say maybe the next one. Yeah, I'll, re I'll read on a little bit. It says, you can pause it and come back to this, okay? Verse two, it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What is he talking about? Well, my, my belief is number one, I don't think he's talking about the law of God. Sometimes he does that. He uses the word law. He's talking about the Torah, the instruction of God, like the first five books of the Bible, Genesis through Deuteronomy, particularly the law, you know, like Exodus, you know, when he starts giving the laws out and all. But he says for the law, he calls, he says, he, he contrasts law of the spirit, law of, the, uh, of sin and death. Now, when he says the law of sin and death, someone might say, well, it is a holy law of God because, uh, you know, by the knowledge of the law, we sin and the law sentences us to death. The wages of sin is death. You know, the law demands punishment, which is true. The law did that. If you read in the Old Testament, um, he says, you know, if you sin, this is what you're going to get. And he names all sorts of sins and he names all sorts of consequences. Some are worse, uh, harder than others. Like a thief might have to pay four times the amount or something, where a person that murders gets killed. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a life for a life, burn for burn, etc. All right, for the law of the spirit of life. So what is he saying here? The law of the spirit of life is the principle of the spirit of life, the power of the spirit of life. The law of gravity is consistently pulling things down and it never misses. So I think the law of gravity is sort of like the law of the spirit of life. If you're following after the spirit of God, in other words, you're yielding to trying to follow his impulses and you're doing it in his power. How do you do it? Just choose to do it. Say, I trust you, Jesus, I can't do this. The law of the spirit of life, notice the contrast between life and death, the law of the sin of death. Um, so it's the law of the spirit of life. Um, it's, it's kind of the, if you get into the elect, if you get into the current of electricity, there's power and that electricity produces whatever you're going to do, mo uh, uh, motors or uh, lights and all, you know what I'm saying? There's a power there. So it's a law. If you can sort of plug in, you know, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, is it just, um, guiltless uh, statements, you know, telling you that you're justified and all. It goes beyond that. There's a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, th there's his words, right? And I'll finish with this. Have made me free from the law of sin. Now, what's the law of sin? I think it's the same thing. It's a principle of sin. It's the natural power of sin. There's something natural about just doing sin um, when you've yielded to your flesh. And so it's kind of regularity. It's a consistent um, thing there. That it's a thing <laughs> that produces sin, and it leads to death, and a spiritual death too, and physical death. Um, then, when lust hath conceived, it breaks forth sin, and when it, sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. It's a parallel passage. It's a lot of parallel passages in the Bible. And by the way, just think about that. Um, Jesus kind of anticipated this. He kind of said, this is what's going to happen. If you continue my word, then you're my disciples indeed. And, and you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Whoever commits sin is a servant of sin. And then he goes on and says, if the son shall set you free, shall be free indeed. Well, I think um, there's a freedom, he says, from the law, this power of sin and death. And so I'll get into uh, verse three and four the next time, I believe. Um, I'll end with that, but let me just read those two verses and tell me if this doesn't uh, like um, really show and share the sense of victory that you can have over sin. 
first he talks, I'll just brief you again on it. You know, the first he talks about sort of like, there's no condemnation. Your sentence is gone. You're free. Okay. That way. So you're free from consequences, free from punishments, judgment. There's no judgment, condemnation. And then he goes beyond that though. And he says, ah, but Jesus did more than just um, do that, uh, that uh, freedom from your sentence. He says, for the law, okay, of the Spirit. Now, let's, let's put it together, ready? Think about it with me, please. There's therefore, you know, I want to stop and say one other thing, this thing about therefore. Um, really, this is, can go all the way back to chapter three, maybe even further back. You know, the whole letter leads up to this passage. Like, you know, justification, he talks about that and, 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 and how, you know, we're justified in Romans 3, Romans 4, you know, and then we have Romans 5, we're justified by faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God, you know, etc. So it's kind of like more than just chapter 7. But anyway, let's read it again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who, which wa who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For, because... Why is there no condemnation? Because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. There you go. Just get it. <laughs> I, I would encourage you to memorize those verses and just think about it, digest it, say it over and over, realize it, and embrace it by faith. Amen? Thanks.